Hey everyone, this is Steve, and today I'm gonna to show you how to make a frame that can mint NFTs. So you might've caught our last video on how to make a frame on Farcaster. We'll be doing some stuff that's a little similar, but also some stuff that's pretty different. Something that's really popular right now is the ability to mint an NFT within a frame. Now we should clarify, the way this is actually working is different than a standard mint on a contract. Typically with an NFT minting contract, you'll probably have people interacting with that contract themselves. They're the ones signing the transaction and paying the gas fees to get this NFT from the contract. This works a bit differently because you can't really sign transactions through frames yet. Instead, what we can do is use the data already available in Farcaster to get their address and then airdrop them in NFT. So the way it works is that you'll wanna have a contract already set up that you created, that you deployed and have a private key for. And with the private key of the wallet that deployed that contract, you can sign the transactions to Mint and basically just send it to their address. That's how it works. With that said, I wanna say a word of caution. Please be careful whenever you're messing with private keys for wallets. Don't use the private key for your main wallet. Make a fresh wallet, put some test net funds in there, don't put real money in there yet. Just be careful. <laughs> you never stress this stuff enough with uh, NFTs. So just keep that in mind as we go through this tutorial. Now, one of the things that you're going to need for this tutorial is a already deployed smart contract. And there's lots of different ways to do it. If you're not exactly sure how, I would recommend following this video on how we do a mint NFT on base as it follows a pretty simple way of doing it. And the way I did it in this tutorial is I went to Open Zeppelin, used their contract builder, made a really simple ERC 1155 contract, deployed it on Remix, used the address and grabbed the contract ABI from Remix as well. But essentially the three main things you're going to need for minting a NFT in a frame is the private key for the wallet that deployed the contract that has the authority over it. You're going to need the contract address and you're going to need the contract ABI, which is a JSON file with all of the different functions that the contract has. So that way your frame server can interact with the contract on the blockchain. We're also gonna try out the Pinata FDK, which is our frame development kit. If you watched that last frame video, it was a bit messy dealing with all those HTML tags and putting all that in the responses. The Pinata FDK makes that so much easier and allows you to use some of your pre-uploaded IPFS content from Pinata and makes image links even easier. So with that, let's get into it. So the first thing you're gonna to need to get started in this project is gonna be a Pinata account. You can go to app.pinata.cloud to sign up for a free account. And once you have the account, you're gonna need two things. We're gonna need an API key and we're going to need the gateway. So first we can do the API keys by clicking on API keys, clicking new key, and we can give this a name such as frame mentor make it admin, and then generate API key. Once you do this, it's going to show you your API key, API key secret, and your JWT. The JWT is the one we're gonna use, so hold on to that one. Next, you're gonna want your gateway domain. This is already pre-generated whenever you sign up for a Pinata account. So you can just go to the gateways page, and you get to see here, I have one called Teal Elaborate Ape 568 My Pinata Cloud. Go ahead and copy that and save it somewhere safe. Another thing you're going to need is an Alchemy RPC endpoint. This is what we're going to use to help communicate between our server and our smart contract that's already deployed on the blockchain. To do that, you just go to alchemy.com, create a free account, create a new app, and then you can choose the network that you're going to use. For this tutorial, I'll be using base Sepolia testnet. And once you've created it, you just click on this button here for API key, and it'll show you your keys. Now you can go ahead and go to your terminal, and we're going to go ahead and create a Next.js app to get us started. So do that, we'll do npx create next app at latest and give it a name like frame mentor, whatever you wanna call it. We're gonna select all the defaults here using TypeScript, Tailwind, and the app router. All right, once it's created, let's go ahead and CD into it. CD frame mentor. Next, we're gonna install some dependencies. We do that with npm install, and we're gonna install the pinata-fdk, which is our frame development kit, and vm, which is the library we're gonna to use to contact with our smart contract. And that's done, we're gonna add one more file and that's going to be touch.env.local. And you're gonna to wanna to paste in the following values from the blog post, which we'll have linked down below. So you can see here at the very top, we have our pinata JWT. This is gonna be that API key we made in the very beginning. We're gonna have our gateway URL that we used earlier, and it's gonna be in the same format as where you copied it from. So example, dolphin369, something like that, mypinata.cloud. So no HTTPS in the beginning. 
We also have base URL, and this is going to be the actual domain of your app. So while we're in development, we could just leave it at HTTP localhost 3000. But when you deploy to Vercel, you want to use the URL domain that Vercel gives your app. So it might require deploying the app and then coming back and changing that environment variable. Other thing we're going to need is our Alchemy URL from that API key we just showed you a minute ago. And the last two things, we're going to need the private key. Now again, remember, this is the private key for the wallet that deployed your smart contract. Please, please, please do not use a wallet that you use all the time. Make a completely fresh wallet. Start with testnet funds. Please be cautious. You do not want to paste this many other places other than this file and in Vercel when we eventually launch the app. So please be careful. And finally, we want the smart contract address. And this is going to be the contract address for our minting contract. Now that we have our ENV and our project set up, we're going to go ahead and start writing some code. The first thing that we're going to write is basically a couple of new API routes inside of the app router for Next.js. And to do that, it's really easy. We're basically going to add a frame and then a route.ts inside of there. And we're also going to add another route for redirect and add another route.ts inside of there. And let's go ahead and go into the route.ts for frame. And we're going to go ahead and paste this code in from our blog post. So if you need a link to that, it's going to be below. And it'll have all the details of every step here. And let me go ahead and walk you through what's going on. So the very beginning, we have next request and next response from our next slash server. Then we have some helper functions that we're basically importing that we haven't made yet, but we'll show you those in just a second. And we have our pinata FDK. And we're going to initialize that pinata FDK with our pinata JWT and our pinata gateway that we showed earlier in the env file. Next, we're going to have our first function, which is going to be our get endpoint. So whenever somebody queries our URL slash frame with a get request, they're going to get this back. And we're basically able to create some frame metadata or the content for that frame. And it's going to have a few things in here. First, we're going to have the post URL. This is where it's going to go to next when the person clicks on the button. We're going to have the button itself. So the button we're going to say mint NFT, and it's going to be a reader, going to be an action of post to that frame route. We're going to have an aspect ratio of one to one and our CID. What's really cool about this frame development kit is that you can either use the image URLs or you can just use raw CIDs of content you have on your Pinot account or IPFS. I find this a lot easier so I don't have to deal with the really long URLs and it gets really messy. I just put in the CIDs I need. And for this frame, we're basically going to have just three images, one for like the intro saying, hey, mint this NFT, a second image that says you've minted, and then a third one that says you've already minted. So this is going to be that first one that's basically welcoming somebody to mint this NFT. And then it's going to basically return the next response there. Next up, we have the actual minting request endpoint here. And so for this one, we're going to start by gathering the body of the request. Whenever somebody clicks on a frame, it's going to actually send a body of JSON to our server that has information about that user. And so we're basically going to be parsing that information and we're going to be gathering their FID, which is Farcaster ID. This will give us all the information we need about them. Once we have that FID, we can pass it into our get connected address for user function. This just takes in the FID and gives us the Ethereum address that they have connected to their account. We're also going to do a balance check. One of the functions that we haven't written yet is going to basically check if they've already minted this NFT or not. That way we can determine if they're allowed to mint or not and we can keep people from being greedy. So in our first check, we're going to basically say if they have less than one NFT, we're going to allow them to mint this NFT. And to do that, we're going to call our mint NFT function and we're going to pass in that address. We're basically going to have our contract mint something directly to their wallet, just like that. Then we're going to pass that frame metadata saying that they've minted the NFT and give them a button they can click to learn how to do it. We'll have a link to the blog post and then we'll return that response. Otherwise, we're going to say you've already minted this NFT and you can still click on the button to learn how it was done. Now we have everything pretty much set up for the route inside of frame. Let's go inside the route for redirect. This one's going to be really simple. We're going to paste in this code from the blog post. And all this is going to do is redirect our user to the location uh, that we want them to go. So in this case, it'll be a link to the blog post or the Pinata website. Now that we have our routes done, all we have to do now is add our utilities. So to do that, we're going to add a utils folder and we're going to have a, a fc.ts. We're going to have a mint.ts. And we're also going to have a contract.json. 
This is gonna be the ABI that you got from your contract when you minted and created and deployed it. So here's some example that I just posted in. This is what the ABI might look like. Just keep in mind that how you access it might depend on the structure of your ABI JSON data. So for me, I have to get it through output and then .ABI. You'll see here in just a minute. So let's start inside the fc.ts and we're gonna basically gonna make that helper function that helps us get the address from an FID. So here's our code from the blog post, and it's really simple. It's just going to be basically an API request to the Pinata Hub, which are basically the hubs that run Farcaster that allow you to get data and write data to Farcaster. And so for this one, we're going to do verifications by FID, pass in the FID we get from the function, and we're going to parse the information to just grab the first address. If you wanted to, you could grab multiple addresses and feed those back. It's totally up to you. You can make that really fancy and give people the choice of what address that NFT is minted to if they have more than one. Now let's go into mint.ts. I'm going to paste in this code here and let's walk through everything that's happening here. So first we're going to import our wallet client and our public client from VM. And we're also going to import our private key to account and base Apolia from chains. If you're using a different chain, you want to import the appropriate chain that you're using. I'm also going to in import that contract.json file that we used earlier for our contract ABI. And I'm going to make a constant of contract address and process that from our ENV file. Next, I'm going to create an account by doing private key to account, importing the private key from the wallet that we use to deploy our contract. Next, I'm going to set up my clients. The only difference between the two is that one of them will have the account and that's in wallet. It gives it right access. And we're also going to use our alchemy URL inside of that transport. The first function is pretty simple. It's just going to be the mint NFT. It's going to take in an address and we're basically going to do a request simulate contract request with our account, account address, the ABI, which you can see here, I did contract ABI.output.ABI might be different for you depending on the structure of your ABI. We're going to call the function name, and this also might be different for you depending what contract you're using. This is an 1155 contract. If you're using ERC721, it might be safe mint or something else. So keep that in mind. And the arguments here also might be different for your contract. For the 1155 contract, I'm passing in who it's being minted to, the token ID, the amount, and then the call data, which I'm just going to make empty, do a 0x. And with that request or that simulation of that request, we're going to actually pass it into write contract, and that's going to return our transaction hash. The last function is just going to be our balance check where it takes in our address. And for this one, we can just use the public client, which is read only. And we're going to pass in pretty much all the same things, use the function of balance of, pass in our address and the token ID. Once we get that number back, it's going to be a big integer. And so we're going to parse that as a regular integer or as a number and return that balance back to our API. And now with our frame ready to go, we can go to the frame validator, which I'll have linked down below and it's also going to be in the blog post. And with the frame validator, we can basically paste in our URL slash frame because that's the beginning of our API route and it's going to load up our frames, going to tell us all the information about it. And if I click mint NFT, I've already minted an NFT, so it is working. If you want to try it for yourself, go ahead and grab the URL that is for this frame. It is live. It is still working. Go ahead, take it, go to the frame validator, see if you can mint NFT, see if it works for yourself. And then click on the blog post link to see how it's done. Well, that wraps it up for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and found it useful. If you have any thoughts, comments, or questions below, please feel to read them in the comments. Be sure to like and subscribe this video for more content as we continue to build things with Farcaster. Until next time, happy pinning.